Thanks a lot for the kind introduction. Welcome to you guys, to you students. Uh, my name is Ralf Jenig, as already introduced, and um, yeah, I'm heading here at the Institute of Applied Mechanics at TU Braunschweig. So I'm the guy responsible for solid mechanics and um, finite element methods courses. And yeah, I have the pleasure to, to tell you um, something about our master program, Computational Sciences in Engineering. And as already mentioned, I'm here together with Annika Kleinwächter, who is the program director of CSE, and she's the one solving all the practical problems, in fact. So um, Braunschweig, yeah, that's maybe not a city you're so super well, um, um, you don't know maybe where it is and what it's about. It's um, as already said, in the middle north of Germany. And what we are really proud of that we are in the team of the TU9, so the nine leading universities of technologies in Germany. Um, so that's where we're sitting here. And here you see all the other ones from the TU9, so TU Munich in the south, TU Berlin in the east, RWTH Aachen in, in the west. And we're here very close to our friends and colleagues in Hannover. And in the beginning, before I tell you something about the course, um, and I think you might already have um, followed up a bit the material offered by my German university and on our webpage, let me tell you something about um, the practicalities of living in Braunschweig and why Braunschweig, why we believe that Braunschweig is a nice and a reasonable place to study and to live. First of all, it's super central in Germany. We are here and uh, we have some high speed trains crossing Braunschweig, so either by train or by car, we are very quick in many directions. If you like to go to the International Airport in Frankfurt, then it is a train ride of roughly a bit less than three hours. Berlin and Hamburg, the other major hubs in Germany, they're also roughly two hours away from where we are here. And this blue one, this blue guy here, that's uh, maybe you have heard that about Germany, it's a federal state and we have States here, and this is the state Niedersachsen or Lower Saxony in Germany. Yeah, that's Braunschweig. And it's a medieval city, actually a quarter of a million people living here. And the nice thing, it's not only a nice city, but it's also in a very nice environment and surrounding. So just 60 kilometers south of here, there's a very nice mountain region. It's called Harz. There. Highest mountain tip is about 1,100 meters. And that's so our favorite place for doing, for spending the time we're not spending with studying and doing research and teaching. That's where we can go for hiking in the winter. You can go um, cross country skiing or downhill skiing and many other activities. Or if you're lazy, you can even take the steam train up to this mountain tip. And if you're lucky, then you might also see some witches flying around this mountain tip, at least that's the saying that in the night from the 30th of April to 1st of May, all the witches, they fly um, to this mountain tip of Pocken. Yeah, and now uh, this bit fast, maybe I go back to give you a chance to see what I would like to show you. Um, that's where we are, that's our main campus. It's pretty close to the city center. Um, and actually, it's just a 50 minutes walk from the campus to the city center, which you see here. And yeah, it's a very, very nice, not too big city. And you can do everything. The favorite way of doing it here is, of course, you can use public transport. You don't need a car, definitely. But you have to have a bike here. That's how the people in Braunschweig move from one point to the, to the next. Or, of course, you also can walk everywhere. And that's how it looks. It's a medieval city, actually, at least the city center is medieval, of course. It has been um, developed, over this, over, um, developed over the centuries. And that's the central square in the city center. And in the, in the background, you see the medieval cathedral. On the left, that looks like a medieval castle. Actually, it's from the 19th century. And in front of that, that's how it looks in the time before Christmas. So that's the Christmas markets with all the lights. And um, then in the evenings, it will typically be more crowded, actually. Another very important thing that you see on this square, that's the line of Braunschweig. So you will see many lines here in Braunschweig. Also here, in, in, if you look, the, um, the sign of the university is full of lines. So this is dating back 
um, to the old dukes of Braunschweig, also from medieval times. And actually, this is still present, this history in the city center. So later on, the dukes, they moved into a more up-to-date castle. And our days, that's a shopping mall. And, but of course, there are also more modern parts of the city. Here, for instance, that's by um, US architect the Finzi House, uh, the Ritzi House, sorry, in, um, in Braunschweig. And what is quite nice and cute, there's a river flowing just around the city center. The river is called Oka, where you can rent out some boats to do some paddling, or you can also rent out such type of boat where you can have a barbecue on the river. And that's pretty much in the city center. So we really like living here. And there are many other things uh, in the surrounding. We have, of course, um, a theater. We have a museum or many museums here, actually. There's a beach. Unfortunately, no sea. But at least the river banks and the sandy beach. And yeah, I think it's quite nice and easy to spend a nice time here. And that's actually how it looks in our campus. Obviously, that's more from the pandemic times where there are not so many students around at the campus. Nowadays, it's luckily crowded again. No restrictions anymore left. So all teaching takes place um, as regular. And I do believe that's very important to come into touch and to meet colleagues and peers and also the teachers, of course. Yeah, some more insights to the university. That's our Audi Max, so the largest lecture hall. And um, here to have an idea, that's the soccer stadium um, in Braunschweig. Actually, this was the welcome party for the first year's students um, two years ago, just prior to the pandemic. That's how it will be again in autumn, hope, or from autumn on, hopefully. If you like to have it more silent, then you can opt for the library um, so sitting and working there. Yeah, some, some um, remarks on the living conditions of all, um, because I think that's very important to have some ideas about what to expect when it comes to living expenses. That's the situation comparison of all the TU9 cities. And here is also a diagram. The more blue it is, the more expensive are the living expenses or the higher are the living expenses. And of course, then we see here that there's some gradient from south to north. And here, that's Braunschweig in this light, uh, light red area here. So you see the living expenses, they're pretty moderate still, have been increasing, but still moderate in Braunschweig. And if you compare it to the um, gross domestic income in that region, which we consider somehow to be um, representative for the average income situation, of course, then we are pretty much to the left. Again, blue means uh, high numbers and red means, means low numbers. So you see Braunschweig is here and our neighboring city Wolfsburg, that's even very far to the left. The reason is clear. That's the, the, the city where Volkswagen has his, um, yeah, all these facilities and many people um, living there are employed by Volkswagen and have very good salaries actually. So overall, there seems to be a very good trade-off between the income situation and living expenses compared to many other um, hubs in Germany. And at the same time, this is maybe not so well known that the area and the surrounding here is also very active research, um, has a very active research um, environment. So it is one of the leading research regions in the European Union. Um, and this is, of course, not only driven by the universities, but it's majorly driven also by industry, not the least Volkswagen suppliers, but also airspace industry and many others. So Braunschweig is a bit surprising if you haven't heard about that before. It's one of the leading hubs in, in Europe even. But coming closer to universities now, and of course, then later on also to the master program, Braunschweig is not the only research unit in um, the University of Technology, is not the only um, research unit in Braunschweig. There are many others, like Physikalisch Technische Bundesanstalt, for instance. So, this is the instit state institution which are ma majorly controlling, for instance, the time in Germany. So, they are doing um, fundamental research on making fine measurements, metrology actually, which is um, another one which have, has been 
very important was this Helmholtz Center for Infectious Diseases, very active during the pandemic in the past years. And then coming closer to engineering, which is our main, um, main area, of course, is the German Aerospace Agency and Fraunhofer Institutes here. History, let me be very quick. So the univers university is dating back to the 18th century. And then the big step was uh, some um, 60 years ago, no, 50 actually, about um, rebranding the university at the University of Technology or in German Technische Universität. And then in 2006, TU9 was established. And we, as I already said, we're very proud of being part of that. And that means just recently, we had our 2275th anniversary at TU Braunschweig. Overall, the um, university is medium sized. We have something like close to 20,000 students, um, an average, some three to 4,000 students starting each year. We are organized in 120 institutes and yeah, all together, let's say two to 2,500 researchers working at TU Braunschweig. The structure is that we are having here six faculties, which is first Karl Friedrich Gauss faculty for math, in particular, but also computer science, life sciences, architecture, civil environment, and environmental engineering. We have mechanical engineering, we have electrical engineering and physics, and finally, humanities and education. And CSE is an engineering track. So obviously, we will be mostly involved in mechanical and civil engineering together with math and computer science. The research focus at Theo Braunschweig has four major activities. The first one is mobility, so everything around cars and um, um, air, airspace industry. Metrology, these, these super high resolution measurements, as already said, then infections and therapeutics and future cities. And you already can recognize for engineering, this mobility thing and the future cities are most of highest interest. Future cities um, comprises many activities in the direction of civil and environmental engineering. Yeah, but finally, we end up also with our master program, CSE, Computational Science and Engineering. And I would like really to highlight the word engineering at that, um, at that point. That's our, um, that's our focus, engineering, and building up a landscape around that. Overall, it's an interdisciplinary master program together with mathematics and um, computer sciences. It's taught mostly in English, but still it has a very strong bilingual concept. I think that's very special in what we are doing here. I will come back to that later. Um, we are involved in many inno innovative applications in the core research areas that I just showed. We organize the, um, the, the contact with the students via a mentoring concept. That means that each student has a researcher or teacher um, as a mentor to supervise, but also to, to, to guide, to get guidance to, um, uh, through the course program and to, um, for the personal development. And other than that, everything is pretty flexible when it comes to the different specialization areas, which I have put here on the right hand side, which is um, distributed across the engineering disciplines, electrical, civil, and also environmental, um, mechanical engineering, and computational mathematics. All, to, all together, we are having each year 40 to 50 students starting. And after that, if you if you finalize your uh, master degree in CSE, you're ready to um, to yeah to disembark for many many interesting jobs and careers in industry and also academia. Um, when it comes to development of new technologies, you will be very strong in interdisciplinary teams, and in particular, you will be qualified for the German labor market where the German language, in particular in the engineering disciplines, is still very important. Of course, it's very good to, to be fluent in English, but many things that are located in Germany, there's, the German is super beneficial to be strong and close to fluent, at least. 
And of course, another way is also um, to, um, to carry out independent research in the, becoming a, a PhD student, actually. And here, maybe you have an idea about some companies where our people have ended, or, or maybe one should say started their career, leading companies in, in, in Europe, but also beyond Europe. The structure of the CSE program, it's a two years master program, which means 120 credit points. And it's, this, um, it's split in or organized in different um, areas. First, it starts with the foundation, the basic core courses, which means foundation in natural and engineering sciences, math and computer and computational science. And um, if you pro proceed in the, uh, in the program, you will have more, chance, more chances to elect and to specialize. And everything is ending then with the master thesis. In parallel to these courses, you will be, um, you have to follow, or you have to also the opportunity to follow German language courses because that's another very important aspect of the training program that you will end up with the DSH certificate after one and a half years, after three semesters, after three terms, that will qualify you to start a career in the German labor market. Some practicalities. Entry requirements is, of course, that you have a bachelor degrees, typically in engineering science, natural science, math, or computer science and a strong interest in engineering, of course. Language requirements upon um, admission is that you're, of course, you need to be able to communicate in English, which means B2, C1. Um, you will need the DSH certificate, but not on entry, but after three semester or three terms which means in practice that if you apply, you need to have completed A1 and upon arrival and upon starting um, the, the master program, you need to prove level A2. Application period for EU residents, that's from January to July, and for non-EU residents, it's January to March. By that, I hope you got many information that you needed. You can, um, of course, contact us via our webpage where you can find all the relevant info information. And we are also looking forward for your questions right now during this session. Thanks a lot.